welcome back everybody to another episode of the nonprofit show. We're really excited you're here with us, joining us today with Patricia Glazer Shea, Pat Shea. Hey, welcome, my friend. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I'm really interested in talking to you about being mindful, about being giving full, give full, and yeah. how we do all this and what we should be thinking about. Um, and so I'm really interested in what you have to say, especially Pat, given that we're in Q4, a lot of our nonprofits are in the final push of year end giving. They're a little stressed out, maybe. <laughs> and so this will be a lot of fun to really get you to help us understand maybe a new path and find a new path. You know, a path that is given to us every day is one that comes to us through our sponsors. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. These folks have been with us for nearly 1,200 episodes. We're now in our fifth year, and uh, we are just honored to call them uh, part of our team. I'm Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I have this amazing cohort of co-hosts. They come to us from all over the country. I'm flying solo today, but I know you've been able to meet them and enjoy them and, and learn from their wisdom as I have. Okay, Pat Shea, founder of Being Giveful. Love the concept. Talk to me about your journey and how you got to this place. Sure, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and I love, this is my favorite subject in the whole world. Good. So I grew up in Wheeling, West Virginia. I'm one of eight. And when you grow up in a big Catholic family, you sort of learn to live in that world of giving and taking all the time. So when I found myself as a nonprofit leader at the age of 40, it felt comfortable to really be asking people to support what we did, to support our mission, and to join sort of the nonprofit family. Um, I spent 20 years leading nonprofits. And right before COVID, I had an invitation to get involved in a tech startup. And that tech startup automated workplace giving and volunteering. I was the CEO and co-founder, and we named the tech startup Giveful, G-I-V-F-U-L. We found that word in, a, in the dictionary. It's an old English term, and it means filled with a giving heart. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, our tech startup kind of launched in the middle of COVID. We really struggled. We were able to keep it alive. We built it up and over about three years, we sold it to a payroll company. But during that time, I was doing interviews with amazing women leaders, asking them about their philanthropy, mm -hmm. asking them to tell me how they developed their personal philosophy to share a story. And I always ended with the question, what did you get back? And my experience is they would get quiet and then they would tell me their stories. And I called these interviews being giveful. And it was one of those moments, you know, how will you just go, whoa, I've always known this. I've always known that those who give receive. We kind of all know that, but I hadn't really personalized it. And women would tell me, you know, you've got a million stories, I'm sure. But like a woman would tell me a story about she started a company. She built a school in India in honor of her parents. And it gets accolades and it graduates girls. And I said to her, so what have you received? And she's like, I didn't do it for anything other than. And she started crying. And she said, I did it to honor my parents who passed away when I was a teenager, but set up a life for me to be well-educated, to be a philanthropist, to give back. Another woman told me a story of how every Saturday, once a month, she would get her children and they'd go to a food bank, prepare food. She said her family would fight and kick and scream, but she would make them go. And I said, what did you get from, you know, 15 years of dragging your two boys and your husband to a food bank? And she said, they pick her up. She said, I, the second Saturday of every month now, my, my son and my grandkids pick me up and we go to the food bank and prepare food and feed people living out on the street. And so, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a simple notion, but I'm not sure that we understand that those who give truly receive. And that's why I developed the idea of a wellness practice. Mm -hmm. a wellness practice, I say, for the mind, body, and soul. 
And that's what I'm calling being giftful. I love it. I, I think it's really an interesting um, piece. And I love that you asked the question, what did you give back? Because uh, we think so much about giving, you know, ourselves and giving our time. And we say time, talent, and, you know, treasures that we give. And, um, but we don't necessarily talk about receiving almost like it's, it's bad form, right? Like, yeah. oh, I don't do this for, you know, for myself. So talk to us a little bit more about that. Do people expect to receive something back or are they shocked? Like, you know, yes. what does that trajectory look like? Well, so they almost get insulted first by my question. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, we give receiving a bad rap. We do. Yeah. We really do. But when I was working on this concept that if, and I usually start my talks by saying, who's heard the saying, those who give receive, mm -hmm. and everybody's heard it. And then I go, who believes it? Everybody believes it, but no one practices it. So I kind of started digging in and I developed, I developed my own definition. So being giftful is what I call the continuous conscious creative practice of mm -hmm. giving of yourself to others while being open to receiving. So it's continuous because it, it becomes how you show up. It's a state of being. Mm -hmm. It's conscious because it requires that you're aware of all the opportunities to give around you all day. And it's not about money. I mean, it is about opening a door. Uh, for me, I'm, I speak to everybody I encounter. So I look in people's eyes. I try to use their first name. My girlfriend, she would stop traffic for any animal she saw on the interstate. But being aware of the opportunities that surround us day in and day out to give of ourselves to others. And then it's creative because it's a practice you're doing by yourself and you can do it however you want. You don't, there's no expectation because it's about you. But being open to receiving is having the belief that the more you give, the more room you make for the universe to give back to you what you need. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you a really short, fun story. My mother, who just passed away, 97, great woman. One day, of, I, we spent the last 18 months caring for my mother. Mm -hmm. And one day, it was really hot in Nashville. I got on the elevator. I was carrying her groceries. And I was in a bad mood. Uh, sure. I was sorry for myself because, you know, it was mm -hmm. hard. And this gentleman got on the elevator, and he's all bent over, and he's got a walker. And um, I thought, you know, I could sit here and be in a bad mood or I could be giftful, right? Mm -hmm. I could use one of my gifts. I could speak to him. So I said, hello, sir. How are you? And he kind of looks around at me and he said, I'm fine. But whoever you're going to see, you are going to make their day. Oh, my God. <laughs> my whole body changed. And so he got off the elevator on the same floor. And he got ahead of me down the hall and pretty soon I'm catching up to him. And I didn't want to scare him. I was worried I was going to scare true, him. True. So I said, I'm sorry. I said, I don't mean to be following you. And he turned again and he looked at me and he goes, that happens every time I meet a pretty woman. <laughs> what a charmer. That's great. I was standing outside my mother's door and I realized I had given him um, my gift. I spoke to him. I recognized him. Yeah. He saw me for the, the work I was doing for my mother. Yeah. He made me laugh, which is a gift of a yeah. gift. If anybody makes you laugh. It, it is a gift. He mm -hmm. called me pretty. Mm -hmm. He completely changed my day. And when my mother opened the door, I was a different person. Yeah. And my interaction with my mother was different. And yeah. I bet my mother's interaction at the bridge table that night was different. Yeah. And that's what I mean about sort of being creative. Mm -hmm. My choosing to be giveful changed my future. Mm -hmm. but that ripple effect just goes on. And so I just want people to know it's about so much more than money, yeah. but really being comfortable and, and being grateful for what we get back as a result mm -hmm. of our being giveful. You know, Pat, I love that you shared that story because that's real. It's honest. And I'm right there with you as you as you are going up that elevator and you're burdened physically, mentally, emotionally. I mean, I, I see the whole thing. And I think and I don't know if it's just serendipity, 
But in the last like 30 to 60 days, I've been hearing more and more nonprofit leaders use the word joy yes. and acknowledge that they need to love what they do and they need to laugh or find something fun, even in the depths of despair or hardship. They've got to be able to recognize something good, almost like for their own self-preservation, right? And I, I, I don't know about you, if, if you've started to see that, I don't know if it's because we're in a dicey general election where there's a lot of upset um, or it's a change of season and we're going into the holidays. I don't really know. Maybe it's a little bit of everything. But um, all of a sudden, there's a recognition of this need, almost a need. And in my career, I have never heard people talk about this. It, I, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I just interrupted no, you. But, no. but what you're saying is exactly true. Right now, I feel like the world is pushing us apart. Mm -hmm. And they want us to be this concept that we're independent mm -hmm. and that we're, we are alone is not true. Mm -hmm. um, Humanity is one wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And so what I like about being giftful is it really does promote the idea that we're all interconnected, that we all work together. And mm -hmm. that, you know, I personally think I have two reasons for my own existence. One is to be the best human being I can be. And second is to take care of humanity and the world, you know, the planet. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're all looking for that connectivity. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, the Surgeon General just came out with a report and he talks about loneliness and isolation mm -hmm. as being our greatest health hazard right now. He said that the loneliness and isolation is the equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Mm -hmm. And I think a practice like being giftful is really a practice of creating connection. Mm -hmm. It's the constant connection with mm -hmm. others. And I think it's a really powerful wellness practice, which is why I have started to dig into this idea that being giftful improves your mind, your body, and your soul. Mm -hmm. So this is fun. If you Google the health benefits of giving, there is a lot of data and a lot of research out there. Mm -hmm. If you live a giftful life, you are actually mentally and emotionally a happier person. You have a reason for being. You're connected mm -hmm. to a bigger cause. Mm -hmm. There's also physical benefits. You know, our bodies are wired to be giftful. We get that first hit of like oxytocin, that warm feeling that, you know, takes yeah. over our body when we've done something kind. Yeah. But they also say that being giftful reduces your blood pressure. It mm -hmm. reduces depression, which depression's linked to heart disease. So, it, uh, and it's interesting, I, I pulled another report, I pull reports all the time. The one I pulled this morning was really from Rush uh, Medical Center, and I just wanted to see what the latest was. But, you know, they talk about the health benefits of being giftful actually provide you with a longer life. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I think that's one back to why we should practice it every day. Mm -hmm. And then finally, and this was the easy one, being giftful really connects you spiritually or religiously, depending on your beliefs. Mm -hmm. Every single religion, every single major religion practiced on the face of this earth, teaches that giving, those who mm -hmm. give receive, and they actually teach the receiving is exponential. Mm -hmm. So why don't we every hour of every day mm -hmm. do one little gift act, one little thing, yeah. You know, I think, Pat, this is such an interesting conversation because I feel like this is a great um, thing to bring up to a, a, your a nonprofit staff or your team, because our frontline workers are just exhausted and, and we deal with burnout and it, it imperils our entire sector. We lose so much talent, you know, and if we could just kind of um, help to um empower them, embolden them. And yeah. I mean, it's such an interesting thing. And again, as we said at the kickoff, I mean, like, wow, really, really important. We just had somebody who's watching um, us live on, on, uh, I think it looks like uh, LinkedIn who just wrote, amen, friends. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. thank you thank you for your comment. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that you're talking about this. Um, and I love that you're 
highlighting something a little fundamental, but yet I find it odd that we are at this point in the trajectory of humanity having this conversation like it's a new concept. It, it's Why really is strange. that? Well, I don't know. Like uh, one day I was walking. This is how funny this is. And now that you've sort of tuned into this, you're going to see the same thing I do. Being giftful is everywhere. It's our natural state. We were born to be giftful. And then we've learned to not receive, like somehow receiving, like I said, it got the bad rap. But I was walking with my girlfriend one day and I was telling her about being giftful. And I've kind of been working on a book and I was doing these interviews. And I asked her, she was in marketing. And I said, what do you think of that? And she said, you know, because of COVID, I haven't been working as much and I've lost some clients. And so I've had to cut back on my joyful giving, but I still tithe. And I was like, tithing is not joyful. And she said, no, it was an obligation. And I'm like, see, those things should not be there. And, and I said to her, let's go to your house and call your preacher because your tithing should be joyful. You know, philanthropy, I, I feel a little bit like I've been in the world of philanthropy for a long time. And the root word philanthropy means, you know, sort of caring for humanity. Yeah. But if you got in a room of, full of philanthropists, it would be about money. And <laughs> I speak a lot. And if you if you get to a big group of people and you say, how many people in this room think of themselves as philanthropists? Maybe 10 percent raise their hands. But once you introduce the concept of giftful, everybody raises their hand. Okay. So I'm honestly thinking being giftful could help us democratize philanthropy more mm -hmm. and maybe let people be more open to receiving back mm -hmm. and, and to look for those gifts. You know, we're all energy. And so when I give my energy to you or I give my energy to a project, I become open to receive more energy. So I might as well be grateful, be open and be looking for the stuff I need to be right. more whole. So it's a practice, but I think we can do it all day long. I, I love it. And I love how you are um, pointing out, and I, I am intrigued by this, the reticence of understanding that receiving is a good thing and that we are um, weak or that we don't need help or that we shouldn't ask for help. I mean, it's a, I don't know if this is like a Western concept or um, more germane to the American spirit, but it's a, a fascinating thing. And then I think it goes the other way that when um, we give, I think sometimes that's a power struggle, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a, a, a domination thing that, you know, so we have to rethink this. We have to understand this. And you point out there's no duality. It's the same process. Talk to us a little bit more about that. Okay. So to me, giving, giving is the, um, well, I'd say receiving is the yin to the yang. So mm -hmm. it is it is the whole process. So I tell people, I say, it's very simple. There's three steps. Start with awareness. Just live in a world where you're present. This goes back to sort of what we talked about earlier on, you know, staying in your space and seeing opportunities to be a giveful person. One of the places that I practice it the most is driving. And I say that because I get very anxious. Nashville's got a real traffic problem. And, you know, the people are aggressive. And I've started to practice being giftful where I'm looking for opportunities to let people in front of me, to be a kind driver. And it reduces all my anxiety. So be aware of those times when this practice could really easily um, change your dynamics. And then the second step, which is the hardest step, is to take action. You know, we we see an opportunity and we think, oh, I should go help that woman load those groceries into her trunk. Mm -hmm. Or I should give my nephew, you know, $1,000 so he can get the bike that he needs for college or whatever the opportunity. Sometimes we hesitate with the action, but mm -hmm. taking that step is important. And I'll tell you more about that. It's contagious. But the final thing is, like I said, that acceptance of what comes back. And it's not transactional. I, sh mm -hmm. I shared that story about that gentleman. It's yeah. not that I give you a dollar and you give me a dollar back. It's mm -hmm. I do something giveful for humanity mm -hmm. and humanity shows up for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you a great story. My sister and I were on vacation and we went um we were kayaking and we're both in our sixties and the young boys that were helping us. It was, I'm sure they were not enjoying how hard it was to get us in the kayak. And we were nervous. 
<laughs> but when we got back, they were so kind and they got our cameras out and they got everything out. So we tipped them well and we teased them about how it was like watching their grandmother, right? So <laughs> later on that night, I was coming home from dinner with my sister. We left our husbands watching sports, but we were carrying an extra pizza. And those boys were closing down their little shack. And so I went over and I said, hey, you guys hungry? I got an extra pizza. And they were like, oh, my gosh, thank you, Mrs. Shea. And they were so happy. And my sister said, what was that about? And I said, I was just being giftful. Well, later that night, Marie and I took a walk and we got locked out of the condominium complex. And so we're standing there. It's 10 o'clock. It's cold. It's dark. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe you didn't bring the key. I said, I can't believe you didn't bring. And all of a sudden I hear this voice and it was Mrs. Shea. And it was one of those young men saw me from the balcony of their condo and came down and let us in. I just think it happens time and time again. You yeah. give, you receive, you give, you receive. So um, it keeps you full. It keeps you complete. It gives you back what you need to continue to give. So unhealthy giving is not good for us. Not being open to receiving is not good for us. Knowing our own limitations, we really need to know what we have to give. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't write big checks, but I, you know, I have an opportunity to be a kind person every mm -hmm. single day, all day long. You know, it's such an interesting um, conversation with you today because I feel like sometimes, especially in the harder parts of the nonprofit sector, um, I'm thinking like health and human services and and dealing with things that are really gritty and can be grim and frightening. Um, I feel like a lot of times the natural um, approach is for people on the front lines to pull back their giving, to not be approachable, to not uh, have that personality or deal with the person you know, that at issue um, with that kindness necessarily. And I'd love to know, um, what you think about that. I mean, you know, I feel like a lot of folks will go to the pantry, the food pantry and help in the back room, but they don't want to go up front and serve the food to, on the front lines, or they don't want to have a conversation with people that are homeless or you, do you see what I'm saying here? It's a, it's almost fear. Yeah. Well, everybody knows their own space. And I think that's really important. You know, I ran, the largest domestic violence program in the state of Tennessee for 11 years. Mm -hmm. And I know how witnessing all of that violence, all of that time can be really hard on your spirit and your soul and your energy. And so knowing what space you can show up in and be giftful is really important. Mm -hmm. um, women, I think, frequently are expected to give way more than than's healthy. Mm -hmm. Nonprofit leaders, I think, and nonprofit staff are frequently asked to give more and we're paid less and we're not held with the same regard as someone who started and took a temp, you know, a company public. I mean, there is a lot in that space, but I think um, what I believe is that nonprofits could teach this concept mm -hmm. to their followers, to their stakeholders, to their donors, their volunteers, their employees, and really promote that, um, the fluidity of giving and receiving and, and ask people to really hold themselves accountable to receive as much as they give mm -hmm. and kind of keep that in balance. Mm -hmm. You know, go to bed at night and ask yourself, what did you give, but what did you receive? Mm -hmm. um, wow. I love that practice um, as, a, as a way to finish your day to reflect upon what you've done and, and uh, where you've been on that journey. Let's, you know, I told you in the green room, this goes by fast and we don't have much time, but I want to talk to you about how being giftful is a currency. And I love talking about this recap at the end of the day and, and kind of trying to, I hate to put it down to this phrase, but measure it, or maybe measure is not the right word, but to recognize how, how did this work? What did you do? How did you feel? How did you make somebody else feel? Talk a little bit more about that with us. Well, and, and I'm going to go back to that awareness, take action and then accept yeah. and kind of keep that real simple practice in your, it's not, it's so simple. It's not complicated, right? <laughs> uh, being giftful, and again, I tried to do a good bit of research on this. I think being giftful is our natural state and it's how we really want to be. 
-hmm. not being giftful is really a harder place to be, you know, it, and that's kind of funny, isn't it? But being giftful, I say that being giftful is the way that we communicate and care for each other, even when we're not thinking about it. Like mm. it's, we just, we receive and give energy continuously. Mm -hmm. And I don't care. I use the grocery store a lot because um, that is a place that, you know, there are so many opportunities or in traffic, there's so many opportunities, but being a connector, I'm a big connector. That is, a, that is a giftful practice. Yes. Yeah. But someone asked me recently why I was such a connector. And I explained, I get more out of connecting than I give. Mm -hmm. So knowing those gifts, knowing what you were given to give away. So that's why it's natural. That's why it's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm answering your question all that well, but I want to share one more story because I think this matters. I heard a preacher in Memphis talk and he had, he was moving mountains. He was feeding people, housing people and I mean, I was blown away by how much he was accomplishing in his life. And somebody said to him, you know, Pastor so-and-so, when will you be finished? When will you have done enough? And he said, when I am empty. Yeah. And so I raised my hand and I said, explain that. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I don't want to show up at those pearly gates, taking back any gift I was given to give away. Mm -hmm. And so when you're giving your gifts, you're not giving the scarcity that you might have in you. Like I said, I'm not a big check writer, but I would be happy to edit your grant tomorrow. I would be happy to introduce you to somebody yeah. who might fund your organization. That's yeah. what I can do. So mm -hmm. knowing your gifts and leading with that, giving from what is easy for you, what is fun for you, what's healthy for you. And then, like I said, just sitting back and saying, okay, world, I'm here. Please mm -hmm. give me what I need. Mm -hmm. Really an interesting way to um, look to, to reset your mind about um, burdens that you might carry or that sense of burnout where we're navigating. Um, as, again, I keep going back to Q4, how stressful it is for so many of us in the nonprofit sector, but recognizing that there's an opportunity to reframe, you know, this it's it's an attitude adjustment. It's a it's a very interesting thing, Pat, to kind of rethink about this. And I think this is something that would be great to share uh, at a team meeting uh, with your board, you know, to talk about what's the reality of, of the work and, and how it impacts you and um, how to re rethink it. Right. I mean, it's it's really brilliant. I so appreciate you uh, coming on today and and sharing your story and also your attitude and your mindfulness. I think it's been really great to learn from you. Um, you can learn more about Pat and her work at beinggiveful.com and learn about where she is and, and where she's going to be um, from all of her public events to um, working within, you know, different populations about being giftful. Great, great conversation. Thank you so much, Pat. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me on today. It's been a lot of fun. And, and um, I think you've given me something really interesting to think about moving forward as I journey across this busy week. Everybody's in a busy week right now, right? I mean, it's right. a busy time of year. And so there's a lot going on. Oh, my goodness. We're gearing up for so much. And so this has been a wonderful, wonderful dare I say, reset, Pat. So thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, we are full of gratitude and gratefulness for our presenting sponsors, and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, our new episodes on Friday, just on Fridays, just dedicated to fundraisers and fundraising and all the things that that part of our sector goes through and deals with. And then your part-time controller. Um, I'm super excited, Pat. I have to share this as we go out. Um, some of the leaders of your part-time controller have traveled into my city today for some other work. And uh, I get to meet with them and have lunch. These are people I've worked with for years, right. but I've done it digitally, right? And so, you know, the first thing is always, I thought you would be taller, you know, <laughs> you know, so that's great. Yeah, it'll be, I'm very, very excited. Uh, your part-time controller has been with us and a major supporter of ours since the beginning. But like I said, you know, we don't always work 
mano a mano together. And so this will be fun. But anyway, you know, Pat, each and every episode, we sign off with this mantra and it means different things. And uh, today, uh, yet again, it means something different. And it goes like this, to stay well so you can do well.